So welcome to the channel. This is part two on us getting some emergency off-grid water. So if you watched the previous episode, I showed two ways on how to put in a hand pump well. Driving down a manual casing with a sand point on it, and I showed you how I used a pump over here to water jet the hole down. So not only we're going to have a manual hand pump out here, but we're going to put us in a very low-powered shallow well 120 volt pump and i'm going to set up some solar panels out here so if i need to come out and fill some ibc totes haul water back up to the house go water animals or just need some pressurized water for many different reasons i'm going to set it up where we can bring a small generator down here a portable power station that'll run off of solar panels whatever we may need to do some continuous pumping and we're always going to have our hand pump well in case well things just get really bad and we don't have access to solar or any kind of power we're about to fire up the Pump. I'm going to show you how I'm going to water jet this out a little more. Plus, the reason I want to water jet out this hole right here is for more water percolation. And we should get a higher flow rate to that sand head that's down there. You're not talking much flow rate to a hand pump, but I'm about to fire up a 120 volt pump on this. I may suck this little well dry. So I'm thinking if I water jet out a larger hole, we're just gonna get more continuous water flow and percolation into that. And maybe I won't wind up pulling the well itself dry and cavitating the pump. Okay, here's my trash pump. In case y'all missed the last episode, I just went to town, got a couple fittings. It's a two and a half inch to two inch reducer. I'm just gonna take my fire hose nozzle in, put it right in there, slide this over my two inch PVC and just water jet the well out, blow all the material out of the way so we can drop the pipe down a little further and again, keep that well nice and cleaned out. Okay, so soaking wet as expected. I got it down probably another eight to 10 inches. I'd like to go a little further, but I am absolutely in some sort of a rock. I can feel it grinding on the end of the pipe and I'm tired of trying to beat that thing down there. Plus I wanna leave that sand point wellhead down there, the open porous wellhead, not in rock, more in that open cavity that I just blew out so it can constantly collect a high flow of water. So I've bought me a bunch of fittings. I'll explain this in a second. I'm about to Teflon tape up, screw everything together. This is gonna to take me quite a while. All right, so it's time to get ready to install this pump. That way the glue and all can be setting up. You see I have got a pressure treat platform right here made just for bolting in this pump and we'll plumb everything together. 
So I'm trying to set this up to where I can open this valve, run the hand pump, close that valve, open this one, and use an electric pump if I want to. You can see I have got the roof pitched. We're gonna put some solar panels up here. And I've just kind of picked an average degree that should work good enough year round. That way, if we wanna bring a solar power station out here or whatever else that we want to power charge a battery we may even put a charge controller out here and another battery we can do whatever we want to now All right, my friends, the moment of truth. Now I'll admit, I've already done fired this off with a gas generator I have. I've just got my solar set up here and I'll explain what all I've got going on right here in just a second. So this is gonna be my first attempt to fire up a one horsepower well off of a portable solar power station over here. Right now I've already got it hooked up to the panels. We're pulling in 190 watts, just topping it off and charging it. Let's see if we can power up a one horsepower well. Fingers crossed, this all works out. All right, so the pump itself is on. It's already primed up from earlier. I'll explain those whole steps in just a second. Let's bleed some pressure off of it and see if the pump will actually kick on or if it'll trip this unit out. We have water, y'all. This is so awesome. About to kick on. No problem. Check this out. Pump is on and running. No issues at all. Cut this off, see how long it takes to prime it back up to 50 PSI. It's almost there. And it cut off just that quick. Let me show this off, I'm so excited about this. All right, let me show you this again. Open this up, bleed some pressure off. We can watch our gauge right here drop. It kicks on at 30 PSI and off at 50. All right, getting ready to kick on here, just above 30 PSI. Should be kicking on any second. There it is. And now the pressure is climbing again. That had no issue starting on horsepower pump. And don't worry, I'm actually kind of hiding this from you. I got a full review video coming up on this. Y'all know 
my infatuation with now recently solar and portable power stations, that is one bad unit right there. We'll be discussing that in an upcoming video. And for my generator loving friends, we haven't forgot about you too. I've been testing this setup and it looks like something around the 2000 watt, actually this is 1900 watt continuous generator right here that I got from PowerSmart. Small inverter generators like this, fire this up no problem. Wait until you listen to it change tones kicking off and on. But any smaller than this, well, I've tried it. It doesn't seem to want to get over that initial surge and start up of the pump. Golly, I cannot get over how quiet this generator is. This is the quietest generator I've ever heard. All right, I'm gonna take it off the eco mode, which you need to be off of for a pump startup. Let's run some water. All right, we're bleeding some pressure off. The pump is about to kick on any second now. Here we go. Actually, it'll actually kick on when you turn it on. <laughs> Forgot to flip the switch. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So let's quickly go over what I've done. We've got an inch and a quarter pipe that goes down into the ground to that sand head well point. Don't forget there is a part one of this if you want to see a full installation. We come up to a T here. We continue on up to a inch and a quarter cutoff valve. So long story short, I can open that up and I can run my hand well pump. Or I can close that off and run my shallow well jet pump. So in order to make all this work, and so these two don't fight each other or it doesn't suck air from here, this is a one-way valve right here. It has a plunger that goes this direction and it spring loads back and seals if water were to try to go back this direction. This is what you call a check valve. I found one locally. I prefer brass, but all I could find was a plastic one. This is very important. You either need to put a check valve in here or you could put another cutoff valve right here. But you don't want this trying to run and pull water up and it pulls air from here. If you pull air into the system, it's not gonna work at all. So you wanna make sure you can seal off either direction when you're running either pump. All right, it goes into the pump. The pump pumps down into a pressurized bladder tank, just much like you see on a typical house installation. This is just a lot smaller. That pressurizes back up into the line. I put a T in here with a threaded cap so you can open this up before you fire up a pump ever. You need to pour water in and prime this. The pump itself comes with a little uh, fitting right here. I did not like it. You're pretty much pouring water all over your pressure switch and everything else. So I did a large T opening here that would fill up my filter and the pump casing and it fills up the rest of the pipe. The cool thing about priming the pipe that's going down on the ground, that has to be full of water too. Well, all you do is valve in your hand pump, pump it up, that pulls water up the pipe and you've primed the pipe. Close the valve back off, put water in over there. Now you've primed that side, fire your pump up and it should continue to pull water up and out of your well. And because I had an old DuPont water filter laying around, well now I can pre-filter my water for sediment. This takes two and a half inch cartridges, which I literally have about a hundred of them. I bought them at a really good deal a while back. So now I can pre-filter my water. Right now I'm just letting it all run through and flush and clear the well out. Then of course, lastly, if we wanna run the hand pump, I know I got this at a funky angle, but it's so I can actually reach the sun with the solar panels. All you gotta do is open this up. Don't forget we have a check valve here, so we don't have to worry about losing pressure out of our pump. And now, just this quick, we're already primed and ready to go. And we should always keep prime in this, but look at the amount of water coming out. And it's nice and clear. Okay, so I am super excited about this. Not only do we have a manual means of emergency water on the property, we have 
well an electric means a pumped means if we really need the high volume here plus we can quickly go ahead and filter our water for sediment too and it's so nice that we can run on a generator and then if we have some sort of extended catastrophic event and major power outage well save your fuel or don't worry about it if you run out just bring some solar out here plug it in and you're pumping water. You can turn these panels this way and put three for 300 watt. But if this was gonna be my full-time system, build you a waterproof enclosure right here, put you a solar charge controller in there, maybe a big 100 or 200 amp hour battery, and allow this to trickle charge and always keep that topped off and probably put you something like a 2000 watt inverter in there. Then you have a true ready to always run off-grid solar setup. Because this is emergency use for me, I like the idea of using portable power stations, but with some minor modifications, you can make this a full off-grid, around-the-clock setup. So I do want to remind people, this is a shallow seeping type well. I would boil this water before I ever drank it, but for water to carry to animals, for irrigation, anything else that we need it for down here, it's fine as is. And now we can filter the sediment straight out. Although I'm gonna build a homemade water filter, that I can hang right off of this whenever I pump water or put down here whenever I'm coming out of the hand pump well itself. The well opening needs to be sealed up. You don't want contaminants in there, rodents, anything else. So I'm actually gonna put some gravel at the opening, probably put a nice piece of rubber around it, gravel. You can pack it with clay. Bentonite clay is really good, but you do wanna seal up your well opening or you're just gonna get contaminants in it. All right, so if you're curious about this, don't forget a part one showed how I drilled the well, even though I covered some of that in this particular episode right here. Check valve critical don't lose pressure in your pipe make sure all your fittings are nice and tight i had one that was loose and it gave me fits till i discovered it and the system's been working beautiful ever since so i'll put all the links down in the description if you want to go check any of this stuff out and overall it's really not that expensive especially if you start comparing it to prices of having someone come on your property and drill you well and do a setup like this all right so real quick now i'm officially going to wrap the video up i was so excited about this project i've had it in my head for quite a while just sent my buddy some pictures hey here's the finished product about to make a video of this and he tells me oh yeah I've seen that before. So while in this day and age with seven plus billion people on the planet, it's hard to come up with original ideas. This was never intended to be an original idea. But he sent me a video of a channel I've actually watched before, Silver Symbol, who did a very similar setup. And there was no intentions here to copy him, although my design is a little different. But I even wound up using the same pump. I had no idea. I've never seen that video. So I do want to give Silver Symbol a shout out. I'll put a link down in the description if you want to go check his channel and videos out. I've actually watched a lot of his videos in the past on some portable power stations. So with that said, I'm allowed to build what I want. There was no intent to copy a design here. Although they're not exactly the same, it was close enough. I wanted to just give him a shout out for his channel and for the video that he made well before I did. Thank y'all for watching.